my dear students welcome to my today's online class on recombinant dna technology and today we are going to discuss another important topic in rdt that is direct or vectorless methods of gene transfer okay so a brief introduction i am dr meera bike associate professor and head department of zoology maharani science college for women palace road bengaluru 1 you can see my cell phone number and email id on this slide after the class if you have any queries to be sought you are most welcome to contact me now in my previous classes i have taught you about bird eye view of uh, recombinant dna technology and then various requirements to conduct rdt experiments like you have learnt enzymes you have learnt vectors and uh, you have also learnt about the fermenters okay once you know all this now we have to learn about transfer of gene without vectors like i have taught you different types of vectors in biological agents in which we are going to insert dna of our choice and these vectors with integrated dna of your choice are then put into suitable host cells which i have taught you in the last class these are all indirect methods by make, making use of a vector to transfer the gene of your choice into the host cells is an indirect method where you employ biological agents like agrobacterium tumefaciens etc now there are so many other methods where the biological agents or the vectors are not involved for the transfer of gene that we have to study today they come under the topic direct or vectorless methods of gene transfer okay now let us study about that now the term direct or vectorless transfer of dna is used when the foreign dna is directly introduced into the plant genome without the involvement of any carrier or the vector these methods you know basically rely on the direct delivery of naked dna into the plant cells and most of them are simple and effective there are basically three different types of uh, direct gene transfer methods okay now number one physical gene transfer methods and this we study electroporation micro injection liposome fusion particle bombardment and silicon carbide fibers so there are five methods under physical gene transfer category but as per your syllabus you have to learn about electroporation micro injection and lipofection or liposome fusion so this is first category physical physical gene transfer methods okay then second one chemical gene transfer methods here we make use of peg mediated that is polyethylene glycol mediated daae dextran mediated calcium phosphate precipitation okay this is chemical gene transfer methods you are not learning then third one dna imbibition by cells or tissues or organs this also you are not learning so we are learning 
One is the physical gene transfer methods. One is electroporation. Another one is microinjection and lipofection. Okay. Then, what is transfection? At this point, before getting into the different methods of physical DNA tra transfer of DNA by physical methods, we should know what is transfection. The term transfection is used for transfer of DNA into eukaryotic cells. Transfer of DNA into eukaryotic cells by various physical or chemical methods. So this you should know as background information. Now let us study about microinjection. What exactly is done in this technique? This is a direct physical method involving the mechanical insertion of the desirable DNA into a target cell. This is just mechanical insertion of the DNA into the target cell. Let us see how exactly it is done. You know the target cell may be the one identified from intact cells or you can take protoplasts or you can take callus or you can take embryos or meristems etc. So the target cell can be any one of these intact cells, protoplasts, callus, embryos, meristems etc. Okay. And normally micro injection is employed for the cultured cells. Okay. Cultured cells. What exactly is done in this method? This involves transfer of gene through a micro pipette. You can see in the diagram here is the micro pipette of a 0.5 to 10 micrometer tip. Okay. You have to take a micrometer of this caliber and uh, you will have the DNA in that and transfer it into the cytoplasm of a cell. Okay. And from the cytoplasm it gets into the nucleus. So basically micro injection by Holding pipette method involves the transfer of G through a micro pipette of 0.5 to 10 micrometer tip into the cytoplasm or nucleus of a cell. Okay. So during the gene transfer, the recipient cells are kept immobilized. You can see here the cell is kept in an immobilized condition in agarose embedding. What you are seeing is basically the agarose embedding and the cell is made to immobilize and it is held on the left hand side by a suction holding pipette. Okay. Then once then with the pipette micro, micro pipette you will insert the DNA of your choice directly into the cytoplasm or nucleus of the cell and once the process is complete the transformed cell is cultured and grown to develop into a transgenic plant okay these cells are cultured and grown into a transgenic plant this technique has success stories the transgenic tobacco then brassica napus transgenic brassica napus you know have been produced by this micro, micro injection method. Okay. Now, this method has limitation in the sense it is slow, expensive and all Tom, Dick and Harry cannot do this. This needs to be performed by trained and skilled personnel. This is the major limitation of microinjection. Then the second method of uh, transfer of genes by physical methods happens to be electroporation. What is done in this? Let's see. This technique is based on the principle that high voltage electrical pulses can induce cell membranes to fuse. Okay. When you pass high voltage electric pulses, the cell membranes will fuse. 
this is the basic concept employed in this then this involves electric field mediated membrane permeabilization okay what exactly it is you know the electric shocks are given mild electric shocks are given to induce cellular uptake of exogenous dna okay when you give mild electrical shocks pores are formed on the membranes and through these pores you know the dna is the dna insert will pass through from the suspending solution this is the basic concept involved in electroporation okay this technique in fact in earlier years was used for the delivery of dna into only protoplasts but nowadays people have exploited this technique to put the dna into intact cells callous cultures and immature embryos also okay but only thing is when you involve this intact cells callous cultures and immature embryos suitable pre electroporation and post electroporation treatments are needed if your transfer of dna has to be successful all right nowadays successfully it has been employed for the production of uh, transgenic plants of many cereals like rice wheat maize etc so this also has uh, successful stories the advantage of electroporation is that it is simple convenient rapid besides being cost effective you know it works out economically that another advantage is the transformed cells are at the same physiological status after electroporation very important point to be noted and further the efficiency of uh, transformation can be improved by optimizing the electrical field strength and addition of the chemical spermidine so before designing the experiment you have to standardize the electrical field strength and the concentration of spermidine and once if you follow standardized protocols automatically the efficiency of transformation will be improved okay at the same time this also has its own limitations under normal conditions the amount of dna delivered into plant cells is very low okay the transfection is low all right then efficiency varies depending upon the plant material used and the treatment conditions if the protocols are not properly standardized then the efficiency will come down then regeneration of plants is not very easy especially when your target cell is protoplast when your target structure is the protoplast all right then what exactly is done in electroporation so i have shown the diagrammatic representation what is done is the cells the target cells are placed in a solution containing dna figure number 1 okay and then subjected to mild electrical shocks when you pass the electricity you know it causes holes in the membranes it causes holes in the membranes then the foreign dna fragments enter through these holes into the cytoplasm as is shown in the second diagram and finally they get into the nucleus that is the third diagram this is what exactly happens during electroporation this has been the effective way to transform e coli cells containing plasmids with insert dna is longer than 100 kb okay then the transformation efficiency if we have to talk about around 10 to the power of 9 transformants per microgram of dna 
for small plasmids of about 3 kb on the other hand transformation efficiency decreases if the size increases it is around 10 to the power of 6 transformants per microgram of dna for large plasmids f about 130 130 kb so this is about electroporation now the third method in this category where physically the dna is transferred is the lipofection what is done in lipofection let us see basically what are liposomes liposomes are artificially created lipid vesicles i'll show you the diagram liposomes are artificially created lipid vesicles which have an aqueous interior that can carry nucleic acids okay so aqueous interior is a must if at all if your aim is to transfer the nucleic acids in fact liposomes are used to transfer proteins also but here our aim is to transfer the gene dna molecules not the proteins and uh, several techniques have been developed to encapsulate dna in, into the liposomes okay so these liposomes carrying these genes can be employed to fuse with protoplasts and then bring about transfer of genes all right so liposome mediated gene transfer is known as lipofection liposome mediated gene transfer is known as lipofection and the efficiency of this lipofection can be increased if it is carried out in presence of PEG that is polyethylene glycol what is done in lipofection you can see the liposome okay so here you have DNA fragments in the first figure A you can see the straight structure of a liposome then you can convert it into a circular structure what we call liposome and that you have it has to be mixed with the DNA pieces okay so the DNA fragments needs to be treated with liposome figure C okay so the DNA pieces get encapsulated inside the liposomes and in figure D you can see that the liposomes fuse with the plasma membrane of the cell and they manage to get into the cytoplasm of the cell all right in the next diagram you can see the dna piece gets into the nucleus this is what exactly happens during lipofection okay then so these cells adhere to cell membranes and fuse with them to transfer dna fragments thus dna enters the cell first and then to the nucleus so the positively charged liposomes very efficiently complex with dna bind to cells and transfer dna rapidly it is quite an efficient technique and is used for transfer of genes to bacterial cells animal cells and plant cells okay what are the advantages so since the dna piece of your choice is encapsulated in in the form of liposomes it is protected from environmental damages okay so your dna your dna insert is very safe inside the liposome then the dna is stable and can be stored for some time in liposomes before actually you plan to transfer into the host cells then it is applicable to a wide range of plant cells okay then this there is good reproducibility in the technique all right so like the other methods this also has limitation major limitation is it is difficulty is associated with regeneration of plants from transformed
protoplasts so students till now i have taught you the vectorless method or direct methods of dna transfer into the host cells so under that three categories and we are learning few methods in one category that is physical methods of gene transfer in that we are learning liposuction electroporation and microinjection so this is all about this small chapter in recombinant dna technology thank you for your patient listening any queries you can contact me stay blessed